he is going to bring a different perspective from the uh, <coughs> company side. The speaker will be uh, Mr. Ricardo Reyes. Uh, he is from East West Seed Company in Philippines. He is a product manager, uh, product market combination. So his title will be Current Status of Bitterguard Production and uh, Marketing in Asia and Market Potential of Bitterguard as Functional Vegetable. So Mr. Reyes. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I would like to introduce myself. I am uh, Ricardo M. Reyes. I am product market combination of uh, East-West Seed. Uh, my background is in sales and marketing. I've worked for eight years as a marketing manager for uh, East-West uh, Philippines. Until uh, two years ago, I was uh, tasked to develop business strategies for the East-West group pertaining to bitter gourd, onion, and papaya. Uh, bitter gourd is a crop okay, that is very close to my heart. Uh, I when I started as a salesman, I often uh, meet a lot of farmers and talk to them. And they're very happy to talk to me because they said that, you know, be because you were taught us how to plant bitter gourd, our lives were transformed. It has a, a positive impact on the way we live. And Looking back, hundreds of farmers in the Philippines, I talked to them, they're really, you know, uh, appreciative. The way we introduce the high-yielding varieties coupled with uh, crop management technology and even to the extent of extending them linkage in marketing, they really appreciate that. And we feel that this really have it transformed the lives of the, of the farmers. I would... When in my new position as a product market combination manager, I also felt the same thing when I went to the different countries. What I experienced in the Philippines, I again uh, uh, experienced. So I would like to share with you my interaction with, with selected farmers. I've talked to several farmers, but I just would like to share those experiences that I had you know, from the farmers that I've talked to in the different countries that I visited. This is, I want to tell you a story in India I visited last year. Uh, his name is uh, the farmer, or uh, farm, uh, father and son team. Uh, his name is uh, Mr. Rama Murthy and his son, Junior, uh, from Dibipur, Bangalore. They've been uh, growing bitter gourd as their main source of income. And they, they, they are planting pali in, in four acres. And according to them, when I talked to interviews, they have uh, yield gave them 21 tons. And they sold their produce an average price of 8 rupee per kilo. But I think that is a very low price. But there are times that uh, prices increase. No? Sometimes it reaches 13, 14, 15, and even higher. And gross income per hectare is uh, estimated at uh, $168,000 rupees, or approximately $2,745. And the cost of production is around 40,000 rupees, $653. So net income is 128,000 rupee. Okay, so in the four acres that they uh, uh, cultivated, they're, get, they're getting $8,367. It's quite substantial for a, uh, a farmer like them. I went to Myanmar. I also talked to the same farmers. But in terms of developed technology, they're not as developed when it comes to the uh, Indian farmers. Because as you know, uh, Myanmar has been a closed uh, country for so many years, and agricultural development was quite neglected. And I was happy to note that they are also trying now the modern technology like hybrid adoption and of course the uh, uh, modern crop management technology. Uh, we introduce our hybrids there, uh, which is the Pali uh, hybrid, also popular in India. And the farmers there are impressed on the good fruit setting, disease tolerance, and the fruit quality. And they could really see the difference when you know they're used to planting the uh, old traditional, and when they plant Pali, the yield doubled or almost tripled in some instances. And the farmer earned a gross income of 900,000 kiat, or roughly $1,007 per acre. They spent 350,000 kiat, or a net income of 615. Maybe for us, some of us, this may be a minuscule amount, but for them, it is something that is very substantial. Let's go to Thailand. I've talked to a farmer there. Their name is Farmer Bamrung of Patumtani, Thailand. He planted our variety, it's a KY16. And they like this uh, varieties, prolificacy, early maturing ability, and fruit quality. 
And in Farmer Bamrung, uh, they, they, he planted two can seeds. At the time of my visit, I, there's well, only 10 times harvesting, but uh, I'm sure it's going to continue harvesting because uh, looking at the stand of the plant, it's going to uh, harvest more, more times. So the average yield per picking at that time is 1,200 kilos. So he doesn't have any problem selling his produce in the market at 12 baht uh, per kilo. So equivalent to uh, 14,400 baht or $450. Sri Lanka again, uh, uh, I met another farmer. It is a farmer and wife team uh, who, who was once a rice farmer and he decided to uh, check out uh, uh, bitter gourd farming. I was quite happy on the results. He tried bitter gourd in a 500 square meter because he just allocated a certain portion of his land for, for uh, bitter gourd. And it was, uh, Ismet provided technical assistance because he's uh, a first time farmer. We, we have to guide him on how to uh, grow the crop. And in the first harvest, harvest, when I visited them, they yielded two tons, which they sold at 50 rupee per kilo. And bitter gourd, according to them, is really more profitable than rice. So again, I am very sure that it's going to, again, expand his operations because of this good experience. In the Philippines, I went back again, and I was happy to see a farmer, a fisherman before, but he, he was able to... Uh, uh, investigate no, the, the, the possibilities of farming, uh, vegetable farming. He was a fisherman, but then there's a problem of uh, the fishes has become scarce because of, uh, you know, there is some illegal uh, fishing there, the, the use of explosives and the climate change, fish has become scarce, and he has to find another source of income. And he found bitter gourd growing as one of the most local, uh, possible opportunities for growing. So he planted our new variety, which is uh, Mestiza, in, in, uh, in 3 fourth hectare. This is a tolerant uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, a virus, which we call in the Philippines Namamarako, or the Polero virus. And it has a big uniform class A fruits. And as to date, he made 23 pickings, yielded 32 tons, sold an average of 43 per kilo, and he has yielded a net income of 1.2 million pesos. His production cost is roughly 0.15 million with a net income of 1 million. So he's really happy and uh, he was uh, being, uh, uh, he was given, uh, even recognized in the community for being such a productive uh, farmer, inspiring all the people in this community to also try planting bitter gourd. So what does this story tell us? It tells us that in growing bitter gourd, there is money there. And Bitter gourd is transforming lives. Every day that farmers experience uh, success in planting, they would tell other farmers, okay, uh, I, I made some money, and I would like you to, I'm, I'm willing to provide you uh, technical assistance to also plant. So if we can promote this kind of uh, uh, mentality, every farmer would try to uh, influence every one of us or even, uh, private companies, government, would support the farmers to, to in their production, I'm very sure it's going to have a positive impact in our society. It's very important now that bitter gourd is being recognized that uh, it is even uh, featured in some of the stamps in some countries, as you can see here. So in terms of bitter gourd cultivation, uh, where are they located? Uh, we, we mentioned that in Africa, we already have some plantings in, in, in America in Mexico, Guatemala, Dominican Republic, because some of the vegetables, most of the, uh, some of the uh, people in the United States, the, 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 the migrants are also from Asia. That's why they're also looking for, for this type of vegetables that they can also consume. So they, this, uh, mostly the production in Mexico and uh, also exported to the United States. But the bulk of the production is in Asia. So this is mostly concentrated in Asia. And total hectares is estimated at uh, 340,000 hectares. And two countries comprise the bulk of production. These are India with 31% and China and 22%. We also see that Pakistan is 9%, Vietnam 6 and the Philippines 4%. There are a diversity of the, of the uh, varieties that are planted. In every country, there are uh, preferred varieties. 
in each country also in some regions there are also preferred uh, varieties what type of uh, bitter gourd types they would like to plant and in India mostly these are the uh, spine types as you can see here the different types with varying uh, uh, sizes from long to half long to medium and also there are some uh, uh, white uh, what you call this white uh, spined uh, types and uh, when I visited some of the farmers in, 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 in India they said there, there are times that the white colored spine types are even higher, uh, demand uh, even higher price than the green colored ones. I'm not sure whether it is because uh, of it's a new one, it's a something, a novelty, but we see some increase in our sales. But when it comes to the white uh, colored uh, bitter gourd in India. For the Chinese types, we also see a diversity of the different types from smooth rib to warty to reeds to different varying sizes into different uh, forms. No? So these are grown mostly in China, Taiwan, Malaysia, Mexico, Honduras, Dominican Republic, and the United States. So uh, these are the, the different uh, types in China. Vietnam types are quite distinct because uh, when I went around the different countries in Asia, it's only there that I see this kind of types uh, in Cambodia and Malaysia. So the, some countries, they have really specific requirements. Like in the Philippines, it's only in the Philippines that these types of varieties are grown. Um, the, the long, smooth, cylindrical shape, 30 to 35 centimeter length, with a 30, 330 gram average root weight. And we also have the smaller one, the short, smooth, spindle shape, with 10 centimeter length. And the Thai types are, are the bigger ones. They, they are mostly grown in Thailand, Myanmar, Cambodia, Brunei, at around uh, 25 to 30 centimeters. So what are the, I'm going to show you now some of the select, the growing practices in selected countries. So in India, I see a lot of transformation. There is a rapid uh, adoption of hybrids in India because seven years ago, most, uh, most of the, of the bitter gourds grown are not using trellis. They just let it grow on the soil. But right now we see a lot of transformation. Even the trellises are made of uh, granite slabs. I see some of them in Andhra Pradesh which is quite sturdy, it doesn't just easily uh, break down. And also adoption of the different types like the white uh, light bitter gourds. So key growing areas uh, based on our information are the, are the following, uh, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Bihar, and also Punjab and uh, some parts in uh, Tam, uh, Tamil. No? Disease problems are the, are the following, uh, powdery mildew, downy mildew, and some viruses. So in Thailand, this is the way they grow it. Because there are some low-lying areas where uh, uh, water is uh, difficult to control, so they have to build, uh, you know, um, uh, high, uh, high uh, plots so they can plant. And they ingeniously also use uh, small boats to irrigate, to apply uh, fertilizers and harvest. In the Philippines, we, we uh, also see a different, uh, we were able to convert OP to hybrid by introducing them, uh, them also technology. Like for example, the small types, most of them are grown in the soil, but now most of the, of the, of the bitter gourds in this segment are already using uh, trellis. And there are also instances where limited uh, land uh, prohibits people to plant. So they tested uh, planting in, in sacks, which is quite, uh, uh, this is a, uh, it's good for people, especially those who, who live in the urban area and who wanted to, uh, this is a possibility, a possible uh, method. So in China, this is the way uh, they grow them. You could see uh, the, they also have some uh, irrigation. Okay, the drip irrigation. And a lot of bitter gourd is grown under greenhouse in uh, Shandong, Sichuan, and Yunnan. And based on from our estimates, this can run up to 10,000 hectares. These, uh, these are grown uh, during uh, winter season in January, December. So this is a, a, uh, the way they can continue producing uh, uh, bitter gourds. So in Vietnam, uh, along the Mekong River, we also see uh, a lot of uh, bitter gourd planting. And they use these types of uh, trellises, E-types. And that's the way how they harvest. 
And Myanmar, this is the way they, uh, again, I told you that this is still undeveloped, but they're starting to uh, adopt technologies and uh, they see the potential of uh, growing, uh, improving their productivity, adopting modern uh, way of growing. In Indonesia, this is the way they grow it. They have uh, uh, short uh, vine types, that's why they only use straight uh, uh, trellis. How do transport it, tra transporting bitter goods looks like? These are taken from different markets across different countries. This is in, uh, in Thailand, in China, Philippines, and, and, uh, and also in China. So they, they utilize different vehicles to transport uh, bitter gourds from the production area to the wet markets or, or some, from production area to the trading posts and to whatever markets they will, uh, are intended for. And uh, there are some also some issues here of uh, uh, if you really wanted a good quality uh, bitter gourd, it has to have a good transportability and shelf life. It's a desired trait for, this, uh, for, the, for, for, for the transporters. And trading markets and bitter gourd, uh, this is the way they look like. As you can see, uh, they put them in, 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 uh, in some they put in uh, plastics, and they pack in uh, crates and different uh, manner. And retail. Retail, this is the, I, 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 on, on my way here, I, I just uh, took a photo of how they uh, sell bitter gourds. Because I think in, 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 uh, in, uh, in Cornell, they prefer the half, half size, half long size uh, bitter gourds. Okay. So I would like to tell you uh, how, how does the hybrid adoption in Southeast Asia started. Uh, it began in the early 80s, uh, where in, uh, most the, in the early 80s, the bitter, bitter goods are mostly OPs, low yield and uh, poor fruit quality. And um, it, uh, high input, it requires high input because you need the trellis and a lot of chemicals to spray. And it is a high price crop, okay? Uh, palm gate price at that time uh, is uh, at $50 uh, per kilo. So uh, our chairman, uh, Simon Groth, came to Southeast Asia in 1981, and that's when he saw the potential for hybrid development. And he established the, the, our company, East West. So our first uh, commercial uh, bit, uh, vegetable is a hybrid uh, uh, bitter gourd. It is called the Jade Star, which was introduced in uh, 1985, the first locally developed commercial vegetable in all of Southeast Asia. So at that time, it's very difficult for us to sell this one because farmers, they uh, just save the seeds and they plant. So there's the, they're not so accustomed to buying, you know, paying, paying for a seed at that time is something that is uh, uh, unusual. So <laughs> you could imagine for the first five years of operations of our company there, we, we're not making money. But since we believe that we can make a, a difference, so we, we decided to continue uh, promoting hybrids. So that's the picture of the hybrid that we first introduced. And in 1987, we launched uh, another variety, Sayid 71, uh, in Thailand, where this variety is the locally first developed commercial vegetable hybrid for, for Thailand. And that also started the the uh, development of bitter gourd as a commercial crop. In 1999, uh, we developed hybrid for Vietnam, and until now, they are dominating the, the segments for the different markets. These are the types. So the impact on hybrids, there is a, uh, a, really a, a yield improvement. There's a good plant vigor, better disease tolerance, and better adaptation and fruit setting, even in stressful conditions, because at that time, you cannot grow bitter gourd in certain months because of the stress of stressful conditions like rains and uh, too hot conditions. But hybrids, they were able to adapt to the situation. And quality improvement, of course, we have to uh, do some market uh, research. What does consumers want? And we try to develop the varieties that would fit the needs of that particular market. Quality for farmers, great uniformity is also a, a very important trait. And as I've told you, shelf life is very important. In the Philippines, there are some varieties that are better than ours, but because of our variety has a good shelf life, it can last longer. Even if, you know, the mishandling in the wet market, they throw it. Sometimes people, uh, they step on the, on the trucks 
on the jeepneys. And if your variety is not so strong enough, then before, by the time it reaches the market or by the time it is the consumer, it's already not marketable. It's already poor quality. So important also for, 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 the, for the fruit to have a good shelf life. An extended growing season, early maturity and harvest, and of course, uh, off-season adaptation. So what are the uh, success, key to success for vegetable growing? As I know that, you know, we are in this room uh, to make sure that Peter God is available. And if farmers have problems in growing it, then we don't have anything to talk about because they cannot grow it because of some peasant diseases. Uh, they cannot produce the, the right amounts of uh, quality bitter gourds, then we cannot uh, achieve our objective of providing uh, uh, bitter gourds that can also uh, cure our uh, diabetes and other diseases. Improved farming technology have to complement the quality seeds and distribution and marketing. You may have the, go the good seeds, but if that, they don't reach the farmers, then the, uh, the benefit will not uh, arrive to the right uh, target markets. So good distribution and direct interaction with growers is also important. Uh, we, we, we have a, an approximate number of uh, sales and promotion staff in, in Asia, around uh, 700 people, whose only job is to talk to the farmers, see what, they, what are their problems, see what, how can we help them, see how, what, what products that we can introduce that would solve their problems in, in, in growing, and also assist them as well, even in marketing of their produce. So we try to reach out, not only production, but also to the downstream end of the, of the value chain. So a lot of, I'm sure the, some other seed companies are doing this to promote their, their, their seeds. We do, do, do a lot of farmers meetings, field demo, personal calls, and field tours. And of course, seeds have to be available and accessible and affordable. And uh, we make sure that the seeds are, because you know, the, the farming community are scattered all over the, all over the, in Asia. So you have to make sure the accessibility, availability of the seeds. So we, we try to make sure how to uh, um, distribute our seeds that are easy to uh, access by farmers. And in those points of sale, we also try to influence our partners to give technical advice, services and of course, uh, good merchandising materials. Uh, I would like to share with you a story in the Philippines uh, where in, in, in uh, 2004, uh, there is a 40% reduction in bitter gourd production, basically because of a certain virus which we call namamarako. Namamarako is a cucurbit aphid-borne yellow virus. This is a poleovirus in the Luto, Luteo viridae uh, family. It's, a, it's, it's a characterized by thickening of the leaves, yellowing, and also uh, some vein uh, binding, you no know, vein uh, yellowing. So the flowers sometimes the uh, the bitter gourd doesn't bear 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 fruits, you no, know, mostly uh, male flowers. So the, pro the, the there was really a problem there, and uh, we we really noticed a drop in our sales in in Philippines because in Philippines we have a, a good market share, and we really noticed a decline. I went around the different areas. You could see all the different planting. They just uh, no, the, no, no activity whatsoever. And the reason is because of this problem, Namamarako. So it's fortunate that we are always close to what the problems are in the field. And our breeders are very active in identifying those potential problems and developing varieties that are uh, more or less have intermediate resistance to the different kind. So we were able, our breeder incidentally is in this room, uh, her name is uh, Venus. Uh, Venus, can you please... Uh, is not here? <laughs> okay, she's here. She's the one who, who, who bred this variety, and it actually saved the industry in the Philippines, which is the Calactica uh, hybrid Ampalaya. Okay, so, you know, we, we, were, we were so devastated, we thought that it's the end of our uh, success in, 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 because this is a very, very important crop for us. So we really have to work double time. Once we had this product, we really have to roll it out in the market. We have to do intensive promotion. Not only direct selling the variety, but teaching the farmers integrated crop management techniques to control the pests. Not only uh, introducing a new variety, but also teaching them how to manage the aphids, which is trans transmitting the disease, but also how to do cultural management when it comes to uh, fertilization, uh, irrigation, 
um, even the uh, the uh, pruning or of, uh, of, of infected parts. Everything we did that we have to do that because unless you teach the farmers how to do it, that you cannot have a success. Because if you just teach one farmer here to control the aphids and his neighbor doesn't control the aphids, then you're not solving the problem. So you, you have to, to convince the whole community, it has to be a concerted effort. We have to control aphids to avoid the spread. So we really have to work together with so many uh, stakeholders to manage, to, to combat this disease. And the results are successful. Right now in the Philippines, uh, bitter gourd is back to normal and we are enjoying again uh, a good profits for, for farmers. I would like to share with you the, to, to fast track again, to the, the, the uh, dissemination of, uh, of the variety we, we also come up with, with the TV ads to uh, promote the variety. I'm also fast to, uh, over the years we, we see the advantages, the what, what benefits, health benefits that uh, uh, data guard could could uh, contribute. Uh, so we, we see some functional uses that uh, we now see uh, that bitter gourd are processed into tea, into pills, and and juice. Uh, the WHO forecasted the global market for herbal products to be worth uh, five trillion by year 2050, and Europe and the US are the two major herbal products. So in the Philippines, tea and tablet sales reach uh, 400 million, and the gov and some some industries are. Uh, working together, no, are, are looking at a positive trend in this one that there are going to be more uh, increases. Okay, I'm sorry for the. <laughs> I have to. Uh, yeah. So, must, must my, must, can I? I, I want to continue with my, my last slide by uh, looking at the value chain. My, my uh, as you can see, there are a lot of segments in the value chain that they have different needs. And if we want to really to achieve our common objectives of providing uh, a consistent supply of uh, bitter gods, uh, we really need to address production in terms of the farmers. Uh, of, of course, we also have to look at the way we market them. And looking at consumers, we really have to uh, encourage them to eat more uh, bitter gods. So in our company, East West is doing our share. Uh, we do a lot of uh, cooking. Um, uh, contest in the Philippines. Uh, we call it Pinakbet. This is the number one uh, Filipino dish. We, we, we have from region to, we make it to national, so that to get some some awareness on eating uh, uh, vegetables like Pinakbet. Main main source of ingredient is bitter gourd also. So we we employ the the services of a very popular chef, and that's quite uh, created some awareness and excitement among the the population. And I would like to also like to uh, stress that if we want to increase consumption of vegetables, let's start with our children. In the Philippines, we have this Tanim Sakinabukasan project wherein we teach the children how to grow vegetables, including bitter gourd. Because by teaching them how to plant vegetables, they themselves will learn how to eat them. Because when they plant vegetables, they spend time, you know, to cultivate, watching them grow, learning sciences, you know, the art of patience there. So but while getting those values, uh, they are also being encouraged to eat. Because, you know, I, 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 I've uh, uh, worked some time for this one, so I would share it also to my family. I bring some to my, my, my brothers and sisters to eat vegetables. And of course, we are also encouraging proper uh, cooking of vegetables that are palatable to the taste. So if you can, all, the, all, all private and public companies can do that, then uh, we can uh, increase consumption of vegetables. On that note, I would like to thank everyone. Uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity. Thank you. thank you for your uh, good presentation. Because of the time, I think we are going to postpone questions to him during the dinner time. That's the best time to ask questions. So we're going to conclude this session of the morning on, on marketing and uh, with regard to agriculture. I think as most of you heard, we started talking about germplasm and variety development to until marketing and also the perspectives of the skin company. So what you're going to hear now this afternoon will be all these regard is good for us. So 